This last week has been phenomenal. Life is actually beginning to seem like life a little bit again. I'll tell you, after laying on my back or my side or wherever they happen to put me and realizing that I am as dependent as my three-year-old granddaughter is, um, you know, I've noticed some people will come in and they will explain what they're doing. What a difference it makes just to have them explaining to me what they're doing to me that I can't do for myself. Do you know what I realize now? Those people that explained to me what they were doing for me, now I'm beginning to be able to help them because I can do things to help them. If we're going to turn, I've got some strength in my legs. I can help them do that. But there are, there's a whole book here in learning of what dependency really feels like and how terrible it can be. Um, I, I think that, that the application from physical dependency like this to wash and clean and go to the bathroom and change my diaper and stuff is, is directly applicable to uh, missions in fact, I think de dependency is the issue in missions. I think it is the issue that is keeping us from taking the gospel to the whole world. You know, then, then I've been wondering, so what, what is the what could possibly the purpose of this be? And, and uh, it's something that comes from the mission's dilemma where I think it was Oscar Modio said, you Westerners, you know how to minister from strength, but you don't know how to minister from weakness. And he said, so it makes those of us who are weak, it makes it very difficult for us to partner with you. And I think now, maybe God has prepared me to go overseas and to talk to the people on, on the other side of this issue and say, yes, we Westerners have responsibility for creating dependency uh, because we've come and done so much for so many of you for so long. But then I think I'll be able to talk to the other side and say, but you've been, you have gladly accepted it and have gone up into the, into the stands to watch while we played the game and did the ministry but I'll be able to do it from a position of weakness where they can see that I'm so physically weak that I will need them to help me get into a car, get out of a car. Maybe that's the opportunity that God is giving me. There is a poem that has deeply, deeply touched me. I don't know if I can quote it uh, right now, but I'd like to try. It talks about how, how differently we can see things that God sends our way. And mendicant, by the way, I know from Spanish means beggar. I stood a mendicant of God before his royal throne and begged him for a priceless gift that I could call my own. He gave, he gave the gift, but as I would depart, I cried, But Lord, this is a thorn, and it has, hurt, it has pierced my heart. This is a strange and hurtful gift that thou hast given me. And he looked at me and said, Oh, my child, I give good gifts and gave my best to thee. So I took it home, and though at first the cruel thorn hurt sore, as long years passed, I learned at last to love it more and more. I found he never gives a thorn. Without this added grace, he takes the thorn 
to pull away the veil which hides his face. And I believe that what's happening right here is letting me into an into a much more intimate room that I've, that, I've, that I've never had with God, that I haven't even sought because I didn't know it existed. And I don't know how this would benefit anybody else except that I am willing to share whatever I've learned and the harsh, cruel, painful road that I have come to this point through is one that um, has been an ordeal that I hope never, never, ever to have to repeat. But I know that there are lessons in there and I pray that God will use them as the thorn in the poem to pull aside the veil which hides his face. I think that's going to